Alongside decarbonizing industry, it's urgent we turn our attention to the built environment. Buildings are responsible for 40% of carbon emissions throughout their life cycle. This makes it the single largest source of CO2. Cities are either going to be the source of the world's problems or they're going to be the solution that ultimately drives us into a better future. To keep global warming below 1.5 degrees, the world has to reconsider the ways in which it constructs and renovates buildings. Buildings are very, very important in the energy equation. By 2050, emissions from buildings buildings need to reduce by 95% to get to net zero. We cannot come up with the solutions we need without some pretty significant technological innovation. Today, about 30% of the energy consumed by uh, buildings is, uh, is waste. It can be prevented via the use of technology. And building therefore represents a place where there is a massive emergency, a massive urgency to act and decarbonize a sector. Cities consume 78% of the world's energy and they are responsible for 60% of the world's greenhouse gases yet they represent only 2% of the world's land masses. If we're going to meet these ambitious goals to tackle climate change, we have to produce real results in our cities. As population and urbanization increases, it's vital that new buildings are designed with sustainability in mind. As cities uh, entering in new regulations, uh, what we see is pledges and ambitions to go net zero in all new builds starting uh, 2030. In the coming decades, we're going to continue to see more and more people moving into cities. That means we're going to continue to construct new buildings. We need to be thinking about construction in a really holistic way where we're from the get-go understanding what the impact is on climate change. You have to think about materials. You have to think about energy systems. You have to take a systems approach, a, a whole environment approach, uh, in order to make all of the right decisions and take full advantage of the investments that are made in new kinds of buildings and new kinds of models. We see a big opportunity to to use software to drive simulation so that at the phase of design, we would help design firms to simulate thermal effects electrical effects and so on to build the best model, let's say digitally to start with, that's the design phase. We also have software and tools to control construction phases and incorporating materials that are carbon friendly and that will support the construction of a sustainable building. And it doesn't just stop with construction. Innovative technology can empower more efficient, greener running of buildings. Then goes the phase of operates and maintenance. You can have a lot of technology to connect basically all of your equipments and make sure that the building will talk to the facility managers proactively to understand where issues are when they pop up, but actually even more to drive preventive maintenance so that by with a lot of sensors, you would anticipate when failure will happen and hence reduce your costs, gain more efficiency and have actually a tenant that would be happier. An example of a smart, sustainable building can be seen with Schneider Electric's Intensity Building in Grenoble, France. Intensity uh, brings all of this together. It's truly a building of the future today. Spends 10 times less energy than the average of what you can uh, find in Europe thanks to electricity 4.0 technology, more electric, more digital. On site in Intensity, we have rooftop solar panels, small wind turbine that are generating on site, so all green. We are storing some of that energy to standardize or harmonize production uh, with, uh, with consumption. And we are connected to the grid in order to share the excess production that we have on site with a neighboring community. So that has been a great example on how to generate on-site with net zero emissions. Microgrids can deliver more resilient energy solutions while also empowering the shift to renewables. Microgrids is a great opportunity for resiliency in buildings. Technologies for electricity storage are uh, ramping up very fast and we are incorporating uh, generation on-site, mainly renewables, with uh, storage 
in order to provide not only a solution for the increased load in buildings, but also the resiliency that these buildings will require as they become more electric. We need digital technology, one, to understand where energy is available. Second, actually connect it with the points of consumption that in many cases are also going to become points of production. You need digital technology to connect the dots permanently between supply and demand. And these technologies aren't just important for delivering more sustainable buildings of the future. They can also drive green transformation through retrofitting existing buildings. About 80% of the buildings that we will have in 2050 are already built, are already standing. So uh, it is uh, really important for us to develop technologies that will fit the existing building stock. So you use um, smart sensors in your building management system to adjust things like when's the heating coming on, how's the air conditioning working, how are your fire and security systems. And the idea is that by attaching technology, making that smart, you can actually reduce wastage because, you know, we've all driven past buildings with all their lights on all night. If you can reduce that down through smart systems, you could hugely improve the energy efficiency of a building. Through power digitization, we can reduce energy consumed on buildings today. It does not require to completely overhaul the current infrastructure. If we add more intelligence, more software, more digital, we can improve conditions in a simpler way. And it's not just the planet that prospers. These innovations that drive more sustainable buildings are reducing running costs and delivering more human-centric environments. For us, adding technology to the building is not just about decarbonization. That's a very important part of it, but they can be more efficient and provide more comfort and uh, more functionality to the building occupants. When I leave my house, my thermostat goes down, I use less energy. Good technology analyzes our behaviors and it finds efficiency. And that's key here to addressing the challenges of climate change. We can't expect everyone to change their behavior overnight. However, technology can help our buildings be more reactive, more adaptable, and ultimately decrease consumption based on the behaviors, the activities of tenants and residents. While the climate crisis poses great threats, across all sectors, the common goal is driving collaboration and innovation. It is one of the biggest opportunities for innovation that we have ever seen. If we take to heart the fact that the economy is changing, companies that are going to be bringing new products and services to market, that are going to think about radically reducing their use of natural resources, are going to think about supply chains that are climate resilient, those are the companies that are going to thrive and succeed. Across all business sectors, digital innovation is unlocking a brighter future. One thing about all the changes that we're talking about is they've got lots of other benefits like reduced air pollution, improved health, reduced noise. There's lots of reasons why you'd want to do this even in the absence of a climate crisis. As technologies empower sustainable change, we push ever closer to a net zero future. Nowadays, it's essential. Every company needs to be green. Uh, ultimately, their economic future depends on it. Their employees, their customers demand it. And scalability is reached through collaboration. In this all reach to a net zero world, a world that will totally get rid of carbon, this world of electricity 4.0, more electric, more digital, there are many companies that have to participate to that. Customers uh, rising up to the challenge, uh, so together we can build uh, the buildings of the future today. So green transformation is both planet and business critical. But digital efficiency is already driving sustainability. AI and automation is catalyzing progress. And by working together, we are building a sustainable future. <laughs>